So all models are imperfect. No models are the real system. And so it's critical to ask in the spirit of continuous improvement, what are the biggest problems? What are the biggest flaws in the model? So let me suggest a few. First of all, although the model captures a wide range of feedbacks and interactions between resources, energy production, energy prices, the evolution of the energy system, the economy, and the climate, it doesn't capture some important feedbacks that we know are real but are very hard to quantify. In particular, climate change, global warming, is already harming human welfare. It's already reducing economic output and destroying critical infrastructure and capital stocks that are a foundation for future economic growth. That's already happening now when we've warmed the planet just about one degree C or two degrees Fahrenheit. We know that that's gonna get a lot worse, that the damage from climate change is gonna get a lot worse. We do now capture in a very simple way the feedback from climate change and global warming to harm to the economy. But it's done in a very aggregate way, consistent with the uncertainty there, but we don't include the feedbacks to population. It's not just that climate change is harming GDP, it's also shortening lives of people all around the world. That feedback's not included. Another area where the model uh, could be improved significantly is aggregation. It is a global model. So when you pull a slider in the En-ROADS model, you're assuming that that action or that policy, the carbon price, for example, with the revenue rebated to the public, is being implemented around the world. And of course, different countries have different policies and will adopt these at different rates. Uh, now, we're often asked, well, why don't you just make the model more detailed at the level of all the countries, or at least all the countries that are major emitters? Uh, that would be very difficult because you don't have to just capture what each country is doing, but you have to capture the interactions among the nations, not just through energy, but through other forms of trade, capital flows, uh, migration, and so forth. There's no credible basis for doing that right now. And we have to make sure that the model continues to run essentially instantly because its chief advantage is that you can try your own experiments and get immediate feedback. But the aggregation of the model is an issue and it's important for people to think about what the implications of heterogeneity across the different countries would be. Another potential area for significant improvement is a better representation of climate tipping points. We do have a variety of feedbacks in the model that capture the potential for runaway climate change if the planet warms so much that we cross some critical tipping points. One tipping point relates to permafrost thaw. When permafrost thaws, carbon that's been locked up, frozen for thousands and thousands of years becomes available for bacteria and fungi to eat and they produce carbon dioxide and methane as a result which further warms the climate. We have that feedback captured, but in a very simple way. Other tipping points relating to wildfires, relating to uh, whether forests, including tropical rainforests and temperate forests and boreal forests uh, will flip from carbon sinks that are removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere on balance to carbon sources that become a net increase in emissions and lead to still more global warming. Uh, the evidence here is not very encouraging. Recent papers, including one just published on the Amazon, shows that over the last decade or so, uh, parts of the Amazon have flipped from carbon sinks to carbon sources. This is an area where the science is evolving rapidly, and there's opportunities there for us to further improve the model as that peer-reviewed science base continues to evolve. I'm sure there are other areas that you might identify where the model could be improved, and we would welcome your suggestions.